my name is Brian and I'm a technical support engineer here at ScreenMeet. In today's video, we'll be covering the ScreenMeet remote support integration within the ServiceNow platform. We'd like to initially note that the option shown in this demonstration may not be available in your organization if your ScreenMeet administrator has disabled the setting or has required it to be enabled by default. We'd also like to suggest that you utilize the full screen option when viewing this video to more clearly see the demonstration. To begin, there are multiple ways to start a session based on your use case. A case or incident may be created through your service portal, an interaction may be created by chat, or you may have alternate engagement tools such as a phone call. You may also be using ScreenMeet within different views of ServiceNow such as UI16, the Agent Workspace, or the Service Operations Workspace. To proceed, we will show you how to create a session in these formats of ServiceNow. Instead of the UI16 view, you will see a ScreenMeet tab on the support object in question that allows you to create a session. Inside of the Operations Workspace, you will see a headset icon to the right of the current incident. In the Agent Workspace, we will also see a headset icon to the right of the current incident as well. For this particular example use case, we'll be working through an incident utilizing the Agent Workspace. As the agent, I will click on the headset icon and proceed to click on the Remote Support button. Once I have done this, I will be prompted with options to start with the remote control, to start with administrator access, and to record the support session. Please note that these settings may be enabled by default or disabled by your ScreenMeet administrator and may not be visible to you. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will start the session with recording and then escalate to remote control and administrator access once we have joined the session. Once I have created the session, I will see options to either give the user a PIN or a support link. If your organization's infrastructure team has deployed the prepackaged MSI to the internal devices, the end user can click on the link, which will automatically launch the session without needing to download the executable. Lastly, they can open the ScreenMeet application on their device and enter the PIN as well. If the user does not have the pre-deployed application, the end user can click on the link to download the one-time use executable for this particular session. Switching to the end user perspective, they have received the link to download the executable. I will proceed with the download and then run the executable. As you will see in the example shown, the end user is prompted to accept or agree to the session. Once they have agreed to the terms of the session, the agent will then be able to enter it. As the agent, to enter the session, we will simply click on the View Screen button. Once we have joined the session, we are able to see the customer or the end user screen. Depending on the nature of the issue, the customer can then either show us what they would like assistance with, or we may enable remote control to control the device to best assist the customer. This may be relevant in cases where an application is not working as expected, and it may be easier to interact with the device rather than instruct the end user to follow potentially advanced instructions. As the agent, I will see a toolbar to the right of the agent of viewer that allows us to interact with the device or end user in multiple ways. As a note, this sidebar can be hidden if it is not needed to provide the agent with a larger view of the machine in question by clicking on the arrow at the top right of the screen. You can also snap the agent toolbar from the right side of the screen by clicking on the square icon as well. Before we discuss remote control, we will initially cover the screen annotation feature. The screen annotation feature allows you to draw or point to a given portion of the screen if needed. You can also clear and delete the drawings as well. Up next is the option to request remote control. Once this is clicked, the end user must accept the agent's request to remotely control the device. The end user can also check the box to automatically allow future requests if this functionality will be enabled or disabled throughout the session. Once remote control is enabled, the agent can move the end user's mouse and also type as if they were on the agent's machine. We'd also like to note that remote control and administrator access can be set to start automatically at the beginning of the session as shown earlier on when we were creating the session. Enabling remote control also grants additional options as seen in our agent toolbar. 
Windows-based devices, there's a set of Windows tools that the agent can use to more efficiently push commands to the end user's device. Mac and Linux devices have similar tools and functionality specific to that operating system. Some commands can be ran without escalation, though some commands require admin elevation such as the admin terminal, task manager, and any icon that has a shield appended to the top left of each icon. For the purposes of this example, I will request administrator permissions from the end user's device. I can request either local admin or escalate via using our own administrator credentials. For this example, I will proceed with local admin. The end user will see a UAC prompt or be prompted to log into an administrator account. Once the end user has accepted this, the session is re-established with administrator permissions. From this point, we can now see that administrator permission has been granted and our Windows toolbar with commands with the shield icon are now available to be used. This also allows the agent to interact with UAC prompts and log out as the existing user and log in as themselves if needed. Up next is the custom tools option inside of the Windows tools, which allows your ScreenMe administrator to create custom commands that your organization frequently uses that is not included in the default tools list. Up next is our desktop options, which provides the agent the ability to interact with various desktop functions and shortcuts, such as minimizing windows, show desktop, and more. There's also a section for Windows Explorer shortcuts, which allows the agent to quickly access Windows Explorer, task view, program data, and more. Next is our system subset of tools, which allows the agent to check things related to the device, such as Windows settings, control panel, internet connection settings, and more. Lastly, we have options to run custom commands. We can run it in a standard command window or alternatively use PowerShell and also customize the ability to run it as admin and keep the terminal window open after the command executes. Lastly, we have the auto login functionality, which can be used by clicking on the key icon at the top right of the Windows Tools window. This allows the end user to enter their password, which will enable automatic login after reboot. This can be helpful if the end user needs to leave, but a reboot may be needed in the troubleshooting process. This also allows the agent to reboot and remain in the session. Up next is a remote clipboard functionality, which allows the agent to copy text on the end user's device. The text can be pasted somewhere else inside of the end user's machine or brought to the agent's machine. The agent can also copy text from their clipboard and enter it into the end user's machine utilizing this functionality as well. Next is a privacy curtain functionality, which will gray out the end user's screen while the agent may need to enter sensitive information without the end user being able to see it. The end user will always have the option to cancel the privacy curtain by clicking on Control Alt Delete. There's also functionality to take screenshots of what is currently displayed. These screenshots can be downloaded to the agent's computer, to the user's computer, or to the incident inside of ServiceNow. Next is our system information, which gives us data about the end user's machine in detail, such as the operating system, CPU, Windows build, and more. This system information is automatically uploaded to the ServiceNow incident as well as part of the post-session routine if it needs to be referenced again. Zoom to original size allows us to modify the view of the display and revert the view to more accurately represent the end user's perspective. Up next, we have options to switch the display. So if the end user has multiple displays, you can either switch the view of the display that is currently shown, or you can show all screens if needed as well. The stream performance option allows us to downscale the stream quality by reducing the stream FPS and stream resolution. While this reduces the quality, it may be helpful in situations where the customer has low hardware specification or is on a poor internet connection that is being impacted by the remote support session. We can also view or invite other agents to the session, which can be useful in cases where the session is being escalated or in a swarming use case. We can click the Enable URL button and, as the agent, send this link to another agent or subject matter expert to better assist with resolving the issue. Up next is the file transfer functionality, which can be configured by our ScreenMe administrator. The file transfer can either be bi-directional, 
agent to user or user to agent only, depending on your screen meet configuration. These files can also be uploaded automatically to the ServiceNow incident depending on your ScreenMate configuration as well. Next is our chat functionality which allows the end user or agent to type to each other. This can be very helpful in situations where the support call or chat gets disconnected, though the support session remained active. At the bottom of the remote support window, we will see our last few options. Connection info shows a visual indicator as to the connection health of the session. We can dive further into the connection metrics by clicking on the connection info to see if there's any packet loss, check the FPS, bandwidth, and more. As a note, we would like to call out the session type at the top of the stream information. The default protocol is WebRTC, though in cases where the connection is poor, it may fail over to the type of tiles. Tile sessions see performance degradation in terms of quality and frames per second, so this would be a good thing to note in cases where you encounter performance issues for documentation purposes. We also have the report a bug option, which allows the agent to submit a ticket to ScreenMeet support if assistance is needed. Now that we've completed the session, we would click on the leave session button and close out the session. As a reminder, the functionality and behavior of the remote support application as shown may be different than what you encounter depending on how your screen administrator has configured your organization settings. The agent will then be greeted with an option to leave feedback on their session. This is the best place for the agent to submit feedback on a per session level if they have a good experience or if they noticed any issues with the session in particular or have any feedback regarding the product. Once the session has been completed, we will refresh our incident and see that we have a screen meet session that relates to this interaction. To view more information about the session, we will click on the incident here. In our default detail view, we can see metadata such as the session duration, session type, when the session was started, and other information. If your organization has recordings set to go to the ScreenMate cloud, you'll see a recording link at the bottom of this detailed view. Next, we can click on session logs, which will show us granular information about actions taken within the session. This includes, but is not limited to, who joined the session and when, chat logs, feature usage, and more. Next is our device information, which can be viewed when the session is active as well. This device information will automatically be written to the session object though, if it is needed for investigative purposes. Lastly is our attachments, which can include screenshots, transfer files, and recordings. As we can see here, we have the recording of our session and the screenshot that we took earlier on in the session as well. This concludes the ServiceNow and ScreenMeet remote support integration. Feel free to let us know if you have any questions. We'd be happy to assist. Thanks and have a great day.